To make OKRs or objectives and key results measurable, um, so they can therefore fill their promise to measure what matters, we need to solve five common problems in writing OKRs. Now I don't know about your experience, but I keep seeing OKRs that are not written in a way to measure what matters. Most instructions for writing an OKR just don't address any of the common struggles and the typical mistakes of writing measurable goals and quantitative measures. So why are so many OKRs not measurable? Well, it's because they're so often written as actions or milestones, like this one from OKRexamples.co. The objective is recruitment outreach campaign for engineering, and the key results are conduct career day seminars in five universities, harvest LinkedIn to collect 250 potential new candidates, and redesign and publish our careers and jobs website section. The objective describes a project or an activity and not an impact or an outcome or a result. And consequently, the key results are simply actions with quota targets. And because such a vast number of OKRs are written as actions or milestones, rather than as results and measures, our very first question should be this. Is it that OKRs don't measure results because they're poorly written? Or is it because they're not supposed to measure results? Now, it's not an easy question to answer, really. Read the popular literature on OKRs and you'll get very mixed definitions of what they mean and how to write them. You'll need to decide for yourself what you believe before you attempt to make your OKRs more measurable. Now, if you believe OKRs were actually intended to be focused and succinct statements about actions to get done, then you can stop watching this video right here. It means that you believe that OKRs are not a performance management tool to focus us on you know, creating better impact or better results or outcomes. It means you believe OKRs are a project management tool to focus on the most important stuff to get done. So being measurable simply means using activity quotas. But I think that's too trivial and I think it's risky. It means you're trying to focus everyone on getting stuff done without having any link to a system that makes sure the stuff getting done is achieving the results that matter. It's more useful to assume, I think, that OKRs were intended to be objectives that are result-oriented goals with key results that are quantitative performance measures, uh, like this one, which is adapted from UpRaise. The objective is improve customers' experience with our support, and the key results are critical issues resolved within one hour of complaint, customer feedback ratings score exceeds 90% overall, and average turnaround time for normal complaints is less than 24 hours. Now this objective is a performance result, and its key results are quantitative performance measures with sensible targets. This is the OKR format that I reckon we should all aim for. And to have OKRs with that format often means solving specific problems with how they're written. And there are five of these problems to check um, your OKRs for uh, and then fix them. Now over on my blog at stacybar.com, I work through all these problems with an OKR case study for each one and I show you how to make each OKR more measurable. And I also include lots of extra links to how-to instructions for the specific types of changes that I recommend. But right now, let me just introduce the five problems to you and if you want to see my before and after case studies and get those how-to instructions, you can just go to the link that I have in the description that's below this video. Now problem one is that the objective is an action, not an impact. Now for reasons I don't yet know, it's a common struggle for many humans to appreciate the difference between an impact or result or outcome compared to an action. Now measuring what matters means measuring results, not just monitoring activity. If you want your OKRs to be a tool for measuring performance, then they really need to describe the results that you are trying to improve. 
Now problem two is when the objective is vague and not specific and weasel words are a bad habit in strategy and performance and they sneak their way into objectives in OKRs even though we know we're supposed to make OKRs very specific. Vague and broad and weaselly objectives are not only difficult to measure directly, they're also really hard to understand and consequently, they're hard to execute. So instead, write objectives measurably by replacing those weasel words with plain, observable, clear language. Problem three is when the key result is a solution and not evidence. Now in truth, the vast majority of key results that I've read, hundreds of them from various sources, describe how to achieve the objective rather than how to know if the objective is achieved. Actions and milestones and not performance measures. Now they most definitely help out in project management uh, to set uh, progress goals uh, um, throughout the implementation of a project, but actions and milestones are not evidence of results. So instead, make your OKRs measurable by avoiding a list of solutions as key results and aim for you know, proper performance measures that are evidence of the objective. Problem four is when the key result is a quota, not a measure. Now just because an OKR's key result has a number in it doesn't make it a meaningful measure. Often it, it's really just a trivial count. Counting effort is not the same as measuring impact. Measuring impact means that we track the impact over time and we look for changes that might indicate improvement. We have OKRs or any form of goal articulation for that matter because we want something to improve. Using quotas won't make your OKRs meaningfully measurable. But writing key results that are well-formed, quantitative measures of impact will. Now problem five is when the key result is related but not direct evidence. Now one of the most common problems with measuring what matters, including in OKRs, is when the measures or the key results are only somewhat related to the objective but not direct evidence of it. So make sure to write the key results of each OKR as measures that you've designed as very direct evidence of the objective. Now I reckon if you experiment with these solutions to the five OKR problems, you'll make your OKRs infinitely more understandable and more measurable. But the bottom line for me, given all this conflicting definition and inconsistent examples of OKRs, is that I just can't recommend OKRs as a standalone strategic performance management tool, not, not to anyone. A well-designed and communicated strategic plan um, or results map with measurable results and quantitative measures does a much better job at bringing the organisation together behind a unified strategic direction.